to ask you about um, one possible way in which we can move forward where there um, remains hope for a, a solution to the conflict. When I was traveling there, um, many of the Palestinians pointed to um, a lot of the nonviolent resistance and protests that go on in many of the villages there. Um, and we've just recently seen in Berlin, for example, that you know, after five years of doing this consistently, that you know, there was an Israeli Supreme Court ruling saying that they would push the, the, you know, the separation wall back and they would you know, give Palestinians more than uh, that was taken away. Um, do you think that this is one of the models that, uh, that needs to be implemented throughout the West Bank? You know, we've seen just uh, extraordinary measures of oppression and, and violence uh, in reaction to a lot of these protests. And so clearly, um, the Israeli Defense Force sees this as a threat on some level. What are your thoughts on that? Well, I'm, I'm glad you asked it because I think that there's been a, a proliferation of that kind of resistance in recent years. Uh, but I would, I would also say that the, you're, you're absolutely right in saying the level of violence against the population, against the Palestinian population, uh, is, it's, in, it's really unbelievable. I mean, it's, it's hard to envision what occupation and what that, the occupation there, and I would imagine the occupation anywhere, but what it really means to people's lives unless you see it firsthand, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's really hard to, I mean, if you live under occupation, <clears throat> there's a level of violence that is like 24 hours a day around the clock. You, whether it's, whether it's actually happening or it's implied, the Israeli soldiers, the average Israeli soldier, everybody has to, all of the men have to go into the military. So, so like their average soldier for a couple of years, so the average soldier is 18, 19, 20 years old. Very young, often very immature, and increasingly, as I talked about in the book, unfortunately, increasingly influenced by the most extreme forms of anti-Arab racism. And they're given, you know, they're, they're given basically uh, almost a blank check to do whatever they want to to the population. And if you're living under occupation, that means that the minute you walk out of your house, and maybe you don't even have to walk out of your house because somebody might come smashing in the door, too. And this doesn't just go for Palestine. This is, I just was talking a week ago, I was in the state of Washington with an active duty soldier who's done two tours of duty in Iraq. He was an infantry team leader about, and who's filled with guilt. Halfway through his second tour of duty, he said, I woke up to the idea that the people I'm doing this tour are exactly the same as me. But smashing down the doors, going into the homes, smashing the TV sets, smashing other valuables that people have, just to establish we're in control. We have power over you. That's a kind of ongoing day-to-day -day violence, or 24-hour day violence. But then when people go out to demonstrations, even the nonviolent demonstrations, as I think you, you know, that uh, they have no compunction about opening fire. Uh, and they, sometimes I read in the paper, this is the, the thing that's really ridiculous, is they, they'll say, oh, they, they didn't use lethal ammunition, they only used rubber bullets. Well, a rubber bullet is a steel bullet that has a plastic coating on it. It's big, and it doesn't usually kill you. It can kill you, but it can, uh, you know, it can cause, it causes a lot of damage if you get shot with a rubber bullet. So uh, I think that the, the resistance is really incredible. Uh, the fact that the Palestinians have been counted out time after time. They disappeared in 48. You know, they disappeared, it seemed, even more in 67. But they haven't disappeared, and they're not going to disappear. So they find all means of, 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 of resistance. I, I'm not critical. I, I believe that we should, you know, that I believe the people who are living under occupation have a right to resist occupation by the means that they choose. So I support the nonviolent resistance, but I'm not going to argue to people and tell people, oh, you know, just go out there and just keep getting shot and don't do it and don't shoot back. I mean, I don't think that's a legitimate thing, and, and I don't think that goes for, you know, I mean, we talk about this as if that's unacceptable, we should think how the United States of America come into being. That was, you know, there wasn't a nonviolent revolution. Yeah? Well, um, would you consider this a struggle for national liberation, and would you possibly speak to, uh, like, the PFLP and what they've done to actually actively organize and uh, make this happen? Yeah. Well, yes, it's a national liberation movement of the Palestinians, meaning, uh, to, to, to really be able to be liberated from and be able to have real self-determination. 
Um, and that goes for all of the different, in fact, all of the different parties that exist in Palestine support that. Uh, they all do. I mean, whether it's called Hamas, or it's called Fatah, or it's called Hatha, the Front for the Liberation of Palestine. Uh, the PFLP is the largest of the socialist uh, Marxist organizations. Uh, it, w it was viewed as the most dangerous organization by the Israelis, particularly in the late 80s and in the first uh, the major intifada that happened, the uprising at that time, because it was growing very, very rapidly. You know, because it's uh, perspective, its line is that the, you know, one state with equal rights for all people. And that, uh, the, the Israelis want to put the, the Israeli leadership, I'm not saying all Israelis, but the Israeli leadership wants to put the struggle on a religious basis. And uh, that kind of religious and nationalist basis, it's our, our religion against your religion, they prefer that. And think that, you know, so, so at, at one time they actually supported the development of Hamas. Uh, to, to take the, to, to be a rival for PFLP. Um, but then Hamas turned into something else uh, different. But um, all of them are supporting that. And that's, I think that is the essence of the struggle at this point. Okay. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, I'm curious about the living in the heart of American imperialism, what can Americans do to uh, increase uh, resistance? Um, to imperialism, and how, how, what are some of the best ways to show solidarity with the national uh, liberation struggle in Palestine? Well, I think that the most important thing is, in, in a certain way, it's, it's the education, the educational aspect. But from my point of view, the educational aspect is not just books or flyers or meetings like this, but also I think the way larger numbers of people you know, see that there's another side to a question is when they see, if they see thousands of people or hundreds of people or dozens of people who are holding up signs that say there's something different than what the official version is that's coming out. You know, that somebody says, you know, uh, the Palestinians have rights. You know, that Palestinians have been demonized. The Palestinians have been demonized. <clears throat> the Iraqis to a large degree have been demonized. I mean, anybody who resists gets demonized. Uh, and to explain to people that What's being done, supposedly in our name, is not in our interest. I think that's a, a, a very critical point. That, you know, when I, and, and one example I would give is this, is that 